McAllen ISD is a strong and vibrant district that has emerged as a leader in education. It's a district with 25,000 students in a city of more than 130,000, tucked away in a tiny corner of South Texas, a nexus where two cultures blend. It's a place where families matter and children represent the future of the community. Spurred by leaders with vision who seek the best facilities, the best resources, best teachers, and best programs. It's all done with one thought in mind, what is best for children. Like a ship on a long voyage, the district has always had steady hands to guide it. There have been rough seas at times, but perseverance, dedication, and foresight have been hallmarks of the community and its schools. But it didn't get this way overnight. What we see today are the results of steady progress and sound leadership. 100 years in the making. A railroad station had existed since 1905, making it easier than ever to travel to McAllen. And as the warm climate attracted more ranchers and farmers, the need for more schools arose. At that time, parents could choose whether or not they wanted their child to attend school. In 1915, the talk was of revolution in Mexico. But on this side of the Rio Grande, McAllen's educational picture began to take shape. The Texas legislature passed an act allowing McAllen to become an independent school district. At this point, McAllen began to take on the trappings of a modern school district. The board was authorized to hire teachers, to provide transportation for children, and to collect taxes. Student attendance became compulsory. The first school bond was also passed. A bond issue for $100,000 was approved for a new school building. McAllen ISD was on its way. As the 1920s got underway, McAllen provided for a kindergarten program. That began in 1923. At about this time, the school district had grown out of its tiny schoolhouse and now consisted of four campuses. Meanwhile, the jazz age was in full swing. Dance crazes were sweeping the nation. The Great Depression struck on Wall Street in 1929. South Texas was not immune to its effects. In fact, during much of the 1930s, the district had to borrow money nearly every month to meet payroll. During this period, what was called the North Ward School became known as Woodrow Wilson Elementary. In 1936, Sam Houston Elementary opened. Then in 1939, a new building opened on North 10th Street and Jasmine Avenue. It would serve as a high school for three years before becoming Lamar Junior High. Built as part of President Roosevelt's New Deal program, the campus, today known as Lamar Academy, was designated an historic building in 2008. In 1949, the school nurse becomes a mainstay. McAllen originally had one nurse for every two campuses. During this period, the district also had a school for its black population. The Booker T. Washington School, a high school, opened in 1941. The landmark Brown versus Board of Education Supreme Court decision was still more than a decade away. The Washington School was closed in 1957 and McAllen was an integrated district. In the 1950s, school boards approved the construction of five new elementary schools and one junior high. Four of these schools are still in use. Three schools in the 50s were named for Hispanic historical figures, something former board member Dario Garcia recalls. The idea that came to me to have them named because we had the schools named after the Texas heroes. I thought it would be proper to have their names and this school is in their honor. It was a time for change. Garcia remembers serving on the board with a trailblazer. Lucille Hendricks joined the board in 1953 and became the first woman to serve as board president in 1959. Hendricks Elementary is one of just two schools in McAllen to be named after a former school board member. The other is Gonzales Elementary, it's named after Leonello Gonzalez, who served on the board in the 1950s. The 1960s would be a decade of growth. New programs came in as well. As more and more students came to McAllen, the district adapted programs to accommodate the needs of special populations. UIL competition has always been popular. There was a time when students competed for local and state honors in events like shorthand, slide rule, and typewriting. 
Then the growth continued into the 1970s. It wasn't just new schools popping up. In 1975, a new stadium for athletics was built. Originally called Memorial Stadium, it was and still is the largest stadium in the Rio Grande Valley. In nearly 40 years, it has seen graduation ceremonies, band performances, soccer, track, and about 500 varsity football games. Here in McKellen, uh, it's always been the city of innovation, you know, progress, progress, you know, we didn't stay behind. We always wanted to be either the leaders or provide the best for our, our children. Also during this time, McAllen ISD became home to the Regional School for the Deaf. Since then, thousands of students from Mercedes to Roma are bused each day to be in McAllen ISD's care. The 1980s brought more watershed moments. After more than 70 years, McAllen opened up a second high school, McAllen Memorial. For the first time, McAllen had an intercity rivalry, a friendly one between the Bulldogs and the Mustangs. A third high school began in 1992 as Rowe Ninth Grade School was transformed. Suddenly, the Warriors were here to be reckoned with. Athletics has long been part of the fabric of the district. Football was established in 1914. Players wore leather helmets without a face mask. Today, they have the most modern equipment and resources available. Other sports have a long history. Baseball, boys and girls basketball, track and volleyball. In the 1980s, the board paved the way for a soccer program. In the 90s, softball was added, followed soon after by wrestling. Today, more than 4,000 boys and girls participate in the district's athletic programs. Swimming has also been around a long time, but it wasn't until the early 90s that the district acquired something many districts do not have, a natatorium. McAllen's swim programs have gone on to win numerous championships in the last 20 years. All of these efforts occurred due to laser-like focus on student needs. I'm very proud of what McAllen has done in the past and, and will do in the future because we've had some good board members that have been able to carry on the, the things that we thought would, would be necessary to have a successful school. During this time, the Board of Trustees increased the district's commitment to provide quality instruction in the arts. They approved music instruction taught by music specialists for all students kindergarten through 12th grade. In 1998, realizing that good nutrition is linked to effective learning, the district began to offer free breakfast and free lunch for all students. This program continues to this day. In efforts to cope with aging campuses and student growth, the district successfully managed two school bonds, one from 1997 and the other in 2005. This is the first new elementary school in this part of town in 50 years. It's a big deal. The two bonds paved the way for eight new schools in eight years. In addition, new structures designed to support students and staff were established. The traditional school bus, in shape and design, as well as the number, have changed drastically over time. In the early part of the new century, the district became the first in the valley to establish an international baccalaureate diploma program. This globally recognized program challenges students to their utmost. The district has since expanded the IB curriculum into elementary and middle schools and is on course to become an IB district in 2015. It continues a tradition of strong academics, which includes the advanced placement program that saw its origins in the late 1980s and also dual enrollment, which today has more than 1,600 student participants. Dual enrollment is through partnerships with local institutions of higher learning. The Achieve Early College High School was established in 2008. It offers students an opportunity to earn an associate's degree before they even graduate from high school. The district has often named schools for outstanding community members. This includes Michael Fossum, the Valley's only astronaut. Fossum's message to reach higher and higher has inspired educators too. In 2011, the district initiated a long-term framework revolutionizing the way children are taught. Tapping into this generation's tech-savvy know-how, the district made it possible to provide electronic learning devices to every student. At the time, McAllen ISD was one of the largest school districts in the country to provide devices on a one-to-one -one basis. 
the move garnered national and even international attention. Educators from all over began to study McGowan ISD's model. The can-do spirit has always prevailed in this community. It's evident in the district's teachers, too. Their dedication and scholarship has earned the respect and admiration at the regional and state level. Through the years, caring, guiding hands have been there for the children of McAllen ISD. Others have recognized this. Individuals come from different backgrounds and different experiences, but the focus always remains on children. The school system here in, in McAllen has been a very progressive school system all along. We, I think we've had very, very good leaders. We've had very good board members. They have always uh, tried to uh, do for the, for the community through the school board and through the uh, city commission. From tiny sparks, an inferno of creativity has taken root. Today, the annual String Fling Orchestra concert features about 900 students. In the Choral Festival for fourth graders, more than 400 children annually take part. Quite a change from the days of the single white schoolhouse. It's been a century of growth and progress. Generation after generation has stepped up to nurture, to teach, and to lead. It's decades of leadership and foresight, decades of devotion.